Please don't allow defeat to destroy me, Lord. <laughs> Give me reasons to doubt. Try to keep me down. But I'll put the flame out. You can't get to me. Hey everyone! Welcome to the final installment of the miniseries collab with O'Neill Walters, author of the book The Empty Couple, which you can find on Amazon. Before we jump in, could you humor me for just one second? Great. Do these two puzzle two puzzle pieces fit together? Any takers? Oh, yeah, there, there's a puzzle piece in here. You see? There it is. So do they fit? Okay, before you become convinced of my insanity, I don't actually expect you to answer the question without having seen both puzzle pieces. We are going to see later in this video how this metaphor illustrates a big reason why women stay in abusive relationships. Before we hop in, three quick notes. One, this topic of why women stay in abusive relationships does not mean to imply that it never happens to men because they do as well. Two, the sources of this info specifically researched women's reasons for staying in an abusive relationship. The research here is not specifically about why men have said that they stay in abusive relationships, but that does not mean that these couldn't apply to men. I'm sure there is some overlap, it's just that the sources were specifically about women. Since we're talking about how these reasons apply to Ruth, the victimized woman in The Empty Couple, that is why this video in particular centers around women. And finally, the research was specifically on why women stay in bad romantic relationships, but that does not mean that these reasons can't or don't apply to other types of relationships. I'm standing on the edge of a cliff. The most obvious reason to stay is fear of harm. Now, this could be concern over emotional or social harm, but women more than men have to worry about physical harm. A woman is 70 times more likely to be murdered in the weeks following a breakup than at any other point in the relationship. And if she has some kind of handicap that keeps her dependent on her abuser, then the abuser doesn't even have to do anything. All he really has to do is take away the help she needs. And the victim is oftentimes not even the only casualty. Studies show that kids, parents, friends, other family, anyone who dares to support the victim are also very likely to get injured or killed if they're nearby, especially after a breakup. Thanks, Ashley. I will see you tomorrow. Are you nuts? Michael is a psycho. I am not leaving you alone. Please go. If you stay here, it will be worse. But harm and death are not the only considerations whenever it comes to children. Another reason is wanting the kids to have both parents in their lives. And if the husband is prone to taking out all his anger and stress and abusing his wife, but not his children, then she is even more likely to stay in their relationship because she doesn't want to ruin the happy relationship between the father and the children. It's hard to accept that someone you love or someone you have loved has become abusive. Many women feel that if she can only offer enough love and support, she can turn this monster into an angel. And some domestic violence runs in cycles. After some kind of violent episode, the abuser may apologize, do something nice, and offer empty promises never to do it again. This cycle may delay the realization that the abuser is not going to change. <laughs> <laughs> Fear is my enemy, so separate us, Lord. <laughs> Please don't allow defeat to destroy me, Lord. <laughs> I've fought enough. I can't fight anymore. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Michael will not be a victim anymore. In this passage, Ruth mistakenly thinks beer is the real problem. She can't or doesn't want to see that Michael's persistence in violence is the real 
problem. Now you've no doubt heard me say on social media that I believe that people can change, but listen to me closely. People can change, but you can't change them. That person must want to change. Change is hard even in the best of circumstances, and one must be very, very motivated before you see anything happen. Please don't stick around hoping that you can change them, because unless that person wants to change, all of your efforts will be in vain. Whatever you grew up with is your normal. However abnormal or unhealthy, that may be. Someone who grew up with abuse won't realize that a relationship can be anything other than that, so they won't even know to leave it. And it's not just your own experiences that impact you. Society rewards loyalty and condemns disloyalty. If a bully is really charming around other people, it is going to be really hard to get other people to believe what's happening behind closed doors. Yes, loyalty is a great quality and I do not condemn it, but please apply it to people who are going to be loyal to your health, safety, and well-being in return. Sometimes women stay simply because they don't have the money or the means to make their own way, especially if they have kids. Homelessness, inability to find a shelter, custody, and joint assets, these are real concerns, and some abusers purposely put the victim in a bad financial situation, such as overspending the victim's money or hurting her in such a way that she has a hard time even maintaining a job. Dear Lord, our mortgage is due soon. Help us, please. We need you. Amen. Friends and family are huge keys to escaping a bad relationship, so some abusers will try to distance the victim from these relations. Now, this could range from taking up all the victim's time, leaving no time for friends and family, making an ultimatum, you have to choose between these other people and me, or it could be as much as physically moving the victim away from friends and family geographically. Foreigners without proper immigration status, few friends, and little ability to speak the native tongue may become easy targets because they are already isolated from social and legal help. I suggest that you spend today and overnight with a friend. I don't have any friends. I don't have anywhere else to go. Now, not all domestic abuse is utter terror 24-7. Sometimes couples have kids, mutual friends, a great home, shared hobbies, and other great things. When the victim enjoys life with the abuser some of the time, it can be unclear whether she ought to give up the good things to escape the bad things. The status quo bias can still kick in even if their life isn't completely excellent during the good times. Ruth and Michael seem to have the perfect relationship. She's a successful lawyer. They own a beautiful home and drive expensive luxury cars. Trauma has a way of making a victim doubt themselves, or maybe even wonder if they deserve it. Did I trigger him? Could I have done something differently? He's just under stress, that's all. And what if she is exaggerating how bad it is? Yelling and controlling don't leave bruises, so is it abuse? Many abusers purposely gaslight their victims, which is manipulating someone's view of reality, making them doubt their own point of view or even doubt their own sanity. You are safe now, so tell me what happened. I am safe, officer. Thanks to Michael. Then why were you crying? I was just overwhelmed with work and finances. Has he ever hurt you, even if it was just accidental? He gets frustrated because he's not working. Tell me what happened this morning. I guess I just fainted due to the stress of everything. Has his frustration ever been expressed physically? He's a misunderstood man who doesn't deserve jail. Many women who suffer domestic violence begin to believe they are worthless, alone, and incompetent. Plenty of confident, capable women also find themselves in abusive situations. That happens to the best of us, but it is much easier for an abuser to take control of someone who doesn't know who they are and needs others' approval. A strong self-identity and firm views will not ensure that you will never get caught in an abusive situation, but they do plenty to defend against it and make it much less likely that you will. Gaining self-awareness 
accepting your self-worth and understanding who you really are are huge keys for getting out or avoiding domestic violence. The sooner you do this, the safer you'll be. Even outside of the topic of domestic violence, understanding yourself is going to be key to happy relationships in many other ways as well. Michael must have read my note. Why didn't he wake me? Doesn't he find me beautiful? I'm beautiful, aren't I? Now, if you think your relationship is abusive, but you're not sure, as we already saw in this video, it is not as clear cut as you would expect. I highly recommend learning what a healthy relationship versus an unhealthy relationship look like and learning what you can expect from a healthy romantic relationship, your rights in a relationship. The first video in this mini series called Is Your Relationship Dying? Your Rights, Risks and Healthy Habits discusses what psychology says about healthy and unhealthy relationships. The second video, Personality Disorders, How They Harm Relationships, discusses signs of personality disorders and how they can impact relationships. I highly recommend watching these two previous installments in the mini-series to give you a clear scientific perspective of what may be happening in your relationship. If you do find that you need to get out, it is very, very important that you make a very well thought out safety plan before you leave. In the description, I included a link to the app My Plan. This app will help you make a plan for getting out safely. I am also linking the U.S. National Domestic Violence Hotline number below too. Even if you are not currently in an abusive relationship, it never hurts to learn about what a healthy versus unhealthy relationship looks like, not only in case it does happen to you, but also in case a loved one comes to you needing help getting out of one. And that way you can better listen with compassion and concern and be able to help them in ways that they need. Asking, well, why don't you just leave, is judgmental rather than helpful. Instead, ask, how can I help? And then come through for them in a way that really helps the victim out. But as we talked about before, if you support a victim of abuse, you could become a casualty and get mixed up in that. I also recommend that you make a thought out safety plan before you get involved in any way. To find out how or if Ruth escapes Michael in The Empty Couple, you can buy the book on Amazon at the links in the pinned comment and the description box. I hope you never have to endure abuse. If you or someone you love is struggling to escape, then I wish you nothing less than a safe escape, a fresh start, and complete healing of your body, mind, and heart.